This is Mid-Atlantic Women in Agriculture's Wednesday webinar, Market Research. Our presenter today is Shannon Dill, Extension Educator with the University of Maryland. All archived presentations, along with all upcoming presentations, can be found on our website. A special thank you to our sponsors, Mid-Atlantic Farm Credit. This presentation is pre-recorded so questions will not be answered during the presentations, and all files mentioned by Shannon can be found at our website. Thanks for listening. And to get started talking about uh, market research, what we'll discuss today are the basics of marketing research, um, how you identify your customer, your marketing research tools, um, and what's available out there to you. What you really want to do is, is build a better mousetrap. There's so many choices in the marketplace right now. And just saying I have a great product does not always work. Um, so, you know, I hear a lot of people, well, it's, this is great or this tastes well or uh, I, I know how to grow this and people will buy it. Well, that might not be enough research. Um, you've got to go another step. So a market-driven strategy um, is really needed for your market research. You want to identify a target group. You want to learn more about them and what they're willing to do and purchase. And then you want to build products and new products around that group. So most of you have heard um, about niche markets. A uh, niche market is usually a smaller segment of a larger customer base. Niche marketing differentiates your product from other similar products and targets customers who want a unique or a superior product. Niche marketing requires you to focus your business on a very targeted segment of the population. This could be a geographic region, it could maybe be a particular demographic, or people that maybe have shared interests, like somebody that wants to purchase pasture-raised meats. Smaller specialized markets are often overlooked by mainstream companies and they really help farms provide um, a profitable targeted customer base so you can be more flexible. Successful marketing niches must be large enough to be profitable but not large enough to attract competition from other mainstream companies. And this uh, focusing on a niche market can help you create a cost effective way to find potential customers and it will enable you to spend more time improving your relationships with customers. It also helps you to capitalize on, on, on opportunities to create new niche marketing divisions. Um, so, you know, repeat customers really uh, for a business is where you want to go. You don't always want to have to have a new customer. You, you do want to have repeat customers, so think about that. Um, just as a just as a pause for a second, on the right-hand side, there's a chat pod if you have any questions. You can place those in there or any comments as we go along. Files here um, includes the PowerPoint presentation as well as a marketing research document that you can download. So if you click on the files on the right-hand side, you can click those and download them. So why do market research? Um, people will not buy your products or services they don't want. And really, um, you know, don't fool yourself about that. So um, I think my kids are adorable and cute, but not everyone may think that. Or that my dog is um, the best dog there, or my uh, salsa recipe, or my cucumbers are, are the best products out there. Um, we might feel that way, but don't fool yourself that that it's the best. Of course, that's the way you want to talk when you market it. But when you're really shaping and doing your market research, you're going to need to allow yourself to be flexible. You want to learn what customers want and how to present it. Um, and that drives the need for market research. Small businesses, uh, like farms, have an edge over larger businesses in this regard. And it's because small owners can be more flexible they can look at the needs of their customers um, from years of experience and year to year, and they can make changes um, as they need it relevant to their current market. 
So what is marketing research? It answers the who, what, when, where, why, and how of your operations, your product offerings or services, and or your business. And it provides an objective information for building your marketing plan. So a lot of times in part of a marketing plan, you might have a SWOT analysis. So you're identifying strengths and weaknesses and opportunities and threats. Um, and again, it, it is that objective piece of your, your farm and your research. So good uh, marketing requires knowing how to sell your ag commodities, right? Um, and a, market, a good marketer must have an understanding of the ever-changing consumer wants and needs. And with the social media now, with popular press, with so much passion and information around food, what we eat, our food system, um, this is really a great opportunity for you to look at who your customers are and what it is um, that they want. So marketing research, it's really uh, what, what it is and what you do, and I think marketing research is fun. Um, you get on the web, you can check things out. The Internet makes things very easy to look. Um, you can shop at your, you can go visit your competitors. Um, you can go to other states or regions to look at what other competitors are doing. And I've even seen people look at other countries to see what they're doing with um, maybe specialty crops or, or niche-type products. So marketing research, um, it, it is the systematic gathering, uh, recording, and analyzing of the data about problems related to marketing of goods and services. It's going to give you the information or the data that you need to identify and reach your target market at a price that could, uh, customers are willing to pay. Marketing research is not a perfect science. Again, it deals with um, people, your customers, and they're constantly changing feelings and behaviors. And it's really influenced by many outside and subjective factors. So um, it's not a perfect science, but there are some things that you can, um, some research you can do that will lead you to um, who your consumer and your target market is. So to conduct marketing research, you definitely need to gather facts and opinions in some type of orderly fashion. And um, the handout has some things about uh, looking at competitors and what kind of information you might want to um, compare yourself with. Um, I know, you know, we're all in the midst of Christmas season, and I love, when I look at products, I love to compare them side by side, whether it's electronics or um, some type of product I'm purchasing, to compare them side by side and see what they're offering. So look at your competition, um, and, uh, and, and you're able to compare them. Marketing research will identify trends that affect sales and profitability, so it might look at population shifts, maybe legal developments, um, and the local economic situation. So what are people, you know, do they have more disposable income? Is there less disposable income? Are they willing to pay more for um, local or fresh or organic? Uh, what, what are the trends or things that affect your sales and profitability? The next will be keeping up with competitors' marketing strategies. So we talked some about the competition, um, knowing what other competitors are doing, where people are purchasing those products elsewhere, um, and where, where you can access those. So the first step in defining the target is uh, your first and best customer. And our marketing specialist, Ginger Myers, here at the University of Maryland, uses that all the time. And we do see that. I see that when I'm working with um, business owners. They, I say, well, who's going to buy your product? Well, everybody. I want everybody to buy my product. Um, but is that realistic? And not really. Not everyone is going to buy your product. Uh, so what you want to do is decide who is your first and best customer, who's going to purchase um, your products on a regular basis to be, um, again, that first and best customer. There's needs and wants related to food, so there's maybe convenience or unique flavors, um, the understanding of seasonality uh, with products, and I was at a specialty crop conference yesterday, and, um, you know, specialty crops might only be available 
for a two week or a three week period. So are there are ways um, that you can extend the season or you can um, look at production practices to change those. Um, so again, understanding that seasonality. The packaging and quantity desired. So we're seeing people um, want multiple ways to purchase things. You know, do they want to buy in bulk so they can do their own canning or do they want to buy um, smaller pints just for that dinner that, that evening? And then um, what is your potential product mix with those um, products? So I talked a little bit about extending the season or uh, processing or drying or, or doing something so um, you've got a variety or collaboration with that. And um, that's important for cash flow and for farm profitability. So uh, th think about that as, as you're doing your market research. So um, there's different characteristics of customers. So a really good marketer, um, you know, I know people at farmers markets that can say, you know, this is the kind of person I'm selling to. I'm selling to uh, this age group. I'm selling to people with this level of education. Um, they can find, they know those things because those are their first and best customers. So what are the characteristics of them? Um, there's demographic information available, and then there's also the geographic information available. So uh, if you're not going to market on the web, how far are people willing to come to you? Are you a farm that's fairly close to uh, more of an urban center, or do they need to come, um, you know, down a couple back roads to find you? So looking at that uh, demographic and that geographic area is important. So to talk a little bit about the values of customers, so we talked about sort of the, the demographics, um, you know, who they are, uh, what is their gender, what is their age group, what is their education group, what is maybe their race and their geographic location. But what we're finding more and more with agriculture is is um, these psychographic things, uh, the lifestyle piece of it, the behavior patterns, the beliefs and values, the attitudes towards um, their food and where they want the food, their food to come from. So um, the value-based marketing is where we see um, multiple farm sales at. And these are people that are willing to come. I mean, farmers markets are not convenient. They're Saturday morning or they're an evening. You park, you walk around. You know, there's a certain demographic and a psychographic that comes to that farmer's market that makes that effort. Um, so what are the values of those customers? And is there something that you can, um, you know, can you use that information to optimize your product? So one of the values-based marketing um, might be uh, consumers buy Maybe if there's a, a cause, and we're seeing that often, um, is maybe there's an external or an internal cause that they may have to um, purchase your product. And these are two examples of um, an external cause, uh, Stonyfield Yogurt. They did some things with um, breast cancer and um, uh, their, their yogurt product. And the internal cause, Eden Soy was doing some things internally for their community. And so they had an internal cause that they were using. So if you purchased their product, you knew that you were also um, helping a, a local cause or an external cause. Um, this is where I, I really enjoy this part of the, um, the market research. And this is looking at um, potent food attributes, uh, what people are looking at, uh, why they're buying Locally, family farm produced. Um, there's lots of buy fresh, buy local movements. Um, maybe it's manufactured by a business employing sound environmental practices. And we know um, so many of our farms are incorporating those because of um, their feelings and attitudes towards the soil, towards the environment, and our regulatory environment that we're in. Um, we've got to have very sound environmental practices. So being able to um, do your market research, and then your product research so you can um, market your product as environmentally sound or that you've employed um, those businesses that, that have sound environmental practices. Uh, supporting sustainable communities. This is maybe maintaining the local economy, um, offering training for owned um, 
there was a, a, a program that looked for resource stressed individuals. So uh, many of us are around food deserts or we have gleaning programs or food banks. So looking at programs like that, again, people are willing, um, people are looking for more of a cause oftentimes. And especially again in those niche markets, depending on psychographic and um, the demographics. So you've sat down at your computer and um, you say, okay, I'm going to do some market research. Well, there's two types of market research that's discussed um, outside of just farming or agriculture, but uh, in any industry. There's primary and there's secondary. So primary research is tailored to a company's particular needs. Um, and that is conducted by either you or there are companies that you can hire that will do the research for you. The primary market research um, lets you investigate something very, very specific um, to your business. And it delivers more specific results than secondary research. Um, the downside is sometimes um, primary research can be expensive. It can also not always incorporate the ever-changing needs of customers. Uh, most of us do the secondary research. It's pretty easy. Um, the Internet has made it very easy to do that type of research. You can look up um, what different places are doing. Secondary research is based on information from um, studies previously conducted, maybe by uh, the government or by uh, private industry, and it is easy to find, and most of it is um, free or very low cost because they're, they're general surveys and information. The downside of secondary market is that maybe it's not custom to your needs, so it may not be as useful. And so you'll start off with secondary research first, usually. Um, usually you'll start doing secondary research. Um, primary research is usually something that you do before you um, actually get started, or um, even once you start, you're going to want to continue that primary research to find out about a particular product. Um, secondary research really lays down the groundwork, um, while primary research will fill in the gaps. Uh, but again, both should be used um, to, to give you a, a well-rounded view of your, your business. For secondary research, for those of you in farming, um, there are a number of, uh, through our Department of Agriculture, there is a marketing service. You can look up Maryland's Best and see what other farms are growing, things that are maybe similar. Uh, you can also look up localharvest.org. That is a national website, and it looks uh, it's a great place to go on to find out what people are selling, how they're wording their marketing what they're selling it for so you can get some prices. Uh, and that's, that's, that's uh, most, more specific to specialty or niche type products. A little bit more about primary research. Um, it can be as simple as asking customers or suppliers how they feel about a product. Or maybe it's more complex and you have surveys conducted by yourself or maybe a professional marketing research firm. Examples of primary research are interviews, observations, um, direct mail questionnaires, online or telephone surveys, experiments, panel studies, test marking or behavior observation. And you should always be asking people how they found out about you, um, you know, asking them information about how they found you or what interested them in the product uh, is a great way to find more out about your consumer and what their taste and preferences are. Secondary research is faster, it's less expensive than primary research, um, and it looks at information that's already been published. And so census data, ag census data, as I mentioned, um, some of the marketing services, localharvest.org, all of those places you can start to get information about maybe your geographic area, your population, and then different products and services that are being offered. Food trends, um, I always enjoy, I get my Food Network magazine and I always love at the checkout counter, um, I skip Us Weekly and People Weekly for the uh, food uh, magazines and um, I, I like looking at the food trends and as being an agriculture extension educator, always looking at different niche and specialty uh, fruits and vegetables that people are, are looking at purchasing. So um, there are ConAgra Foods each year. They put out a 
big list of food trends. It's pretty um, nationally followed and known. And these are ones that they had came up with um, for 2015 that people were going to be wanting to do, that they were going to be looking at doing. Um, the grazing golden agers, um, these were people that they thought would be, um, instead of the three square meals, that they were going to be grazing throughout the day. Uh, online grocery stores are picking up, and they're adding more fresh foods um, availability as opposed to just processed or, or packaged foods. Um, smoked fermented foods, uh, Generation Z. And so a lot of these trends, they'll talk about the different generations and what their preferences are, and they're looking at um, being maybe a little bit more foodie. They may not have children yet, and um, they're looking at uh, – higher end, maybe more interesting type of foods. Craft foods and, um, you know, craft beer is taking off a lot of the different craft cheeses. Um, craft with a C, not a K. And uh, those have been very trendy lately. The other is nutrition labels everywhere. And we're seeing that at restaurants. We're seeing that at fast food restaurants that um, everywhere has nutrition labels so you know more about what you're consuming. And that... Um, Interestingly, super, supermarkets, and we're seeing, I've seen that here even regionally, supermarkets are converting to more social spaces. And so there's an area to sit down, maybe get some food, maybe get a coffee. Um, so they're trying to keep people there a little bit longer. So localized figures, um, they really provide better information. Um, and they might buck national trends. So the, the national trend that I talked about, the, um, the national food trends, maybe in a smaller, less, uh, or more rural town, the Generation Z aren't chefs every day. Maybe that's more of um, an urban idea. So uh, being very careful about um, looking at your local trends compared to national trends because they might not always line up. Uh, so newspapers, other local media are, are very helpful in uh, that. Secondary research, again, available census and consumption data, and there is consumption data available out there that you can find out what people are um, looking at consuming, how much they're consuming. Trade and general business pubs and trade association and government agencies, again, um, number of studies going on. I know USDA runs um, through their economic research or their agriculture research a number of um, food trends and consumption trends. So um, if you don't know your customer, um, then really you may not know your business. Trying to pull it together. Uh, you need to consider determining your target market. Again, a, a group or groups of people that you're going to be promoting, advertising, and really directly trying to sell your product to. And you want to begin by answering some of these questions. What are your demographics of the area you're competing in? Who will buy your products based on price? What is the age range? Males or females or both? And there's very different marketing strategies for um, both, uh, both genders. Um, are they single or married? Do they have kids? So um, that's an important consideration. And what kind of lifestyle does your product relate to? Is it everyday use, specific to times of the year, or to specific activities? And we see that often with, I work um, some with the Oyster Restoration Program, and, um, you know, Thanksgiving and Christmas, people uh, love to have their oysters. That They just, even though they're available throughout the year, um, those that is when the general season had been. And that's when people are used to consuming that. And you think also about turkey. You know, those time of year, you imagine it more than other times of the year. Um, and then consider, again, your first and best customer. So to, to continue to think about who that person is that uh, will continue to purchase your product. Uh, talk some about trends. And so um, just to be very careful that fads versus trends, fads are something that people talk about. Trends are something that people actually do. So think about that when you're doing your research. Analyzing trends um, will help you identify some niche markets for profitability. And the ideal niche market should be large enough to be profitable, but again, small enough not to attract those larger competitors. So four parts of your plan, um, and this again is in the worksheet provided. Know your customer, again, first and best. 
analyze your competition. And we have a worksheet that will help you do that. Um, who are they? How are they selling? How much are they selling it for? Maximize your unique selling position. So what is going to set you apart from someone else? And then um, the last two pages on the um, marketing uh, is, is a marketing budget and the implementation plan. So, um, you know, it's very important. This all part of market research um, is looking at, and your marketing budget could include some market research. And um, maybe it's free samples to fill out a questionnaire. Maybe it's, um, you know, I have seen uh, people put together focus groups and, um, and get very good information from it. So um, that will help you with successful marketing and, again, that, profitable, um, that profitability. Um, these are some of the resources I used for the presentation. Thank you for watching our archived presentation of our Wednesday webinar. If you would like to see more archived Wednesday webinars, please visit our YouTube channel. Or to find a schedule of upcoming live webinars, visit our website.